on after Bible study, so please partake of that. But we are still, we are still, I'm saying that we are still uh, in the divided kingdom. We are still learning the divided kingdom. We are still in the book of Kings and the Chronicles, all right? We are still there. And our subtitle, it is Spiritual Lessons from the Kings of Judah. It is from the Kings. Which one? We're talking about Judah. We're talking about the side of Judah. And this is part five, part five, all right? You can jot that down. You can write it down so that way you can go back, you can read it, you can study it. Uh, you can teach others. Again, we're talking and reading about the Old Testament, the Old Testament, all right? With that being said, with reading it, I think is very good. Uh, that way, you can say that you read it for yourself. You read it for yourself. Our pastor today was having a meeting with us and pastors, and Pastor Collins was teaching, talking to us, uh, that uh, the best churches are the churches that are teaching churches, uh, where the word of God is being taught today, many people are basically involved or love the preaching and preaching sometimes can be entertainment for some people. Uh, but what we need today is more teaching than preaching. And so uh, I say to you, a church can grow uh, when there is a lot of teaching going on. And that is what Pastor Collins was basically letting us know telling the brethren that there needs to be more, more teaching, all right? And teaching is different from preaching. People can love, notice, they can love your preaching. But as soon as you're telling them to sit down and let's learn, and I'm going to teach you something, that's kind of boring to people. Why? Because you're not being entertained. With that being said, I say to you, fall in love with being taught the word of God. Uh, nothing wrong with preaching. He said the foolishness of preaching. But I, as I say all the time, I don't believe our preaching today is the type of preaching that Paul and them did. Does that make sense? Uh, the preaching that we do, that you see people do today, I don't think that they were doing what we kind of do today. So teaching is what we need. And so part five, I want you to read again. Uh, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, all right? Romans 15 and 4, for whatsoever things are written, written aforetime is written for our what? Our learning. And we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. All right? So we're going to go through. We're going to read. I want you to see some things uh, that are in the scripture again. We've been talking about this particular king at this time. Pull up that list for me if you can. It is basically King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. He is that king that's basically in position, King Jehoshaphat, and he is on the scene. He came after King Asa, King Asa. With that being said, uh, King Jehoshaphat was known as to be a king that was basically good. He was an overall good king. He was an overall good king, King Jehoshaphat was. Uh, with that being said, you will see some things that made him an overall uh, good king. You'll see some things that made him an overall good king. Uh, there were some things that he did not do, but it did not tarnish, I would say, his record regarding him being uh, a good king. And that's what I would say you and I need to do. We need to strive to become uh, a good saint of God, a saint of God that is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. What do we want to hear? We want to hear, well done, thy good and what faithful servant all right that's what i want to hear and so when you look at the list again the list is there it's probably on the monitors to those that are watching live uh but if you see it jehoshaphat he is the what the fourth king that is in position how long did he reign we see about 25 years as the scripture would say and he was basically his character good good you can also read it in the kings as well as in the chronicles all right and so again proverbs 14 and 34 here's something again since we're talking about leaders uh something that we read before we talked about how righteousness exalteth what a nation but sin is a what reproach to any people if you put that for me please in the different translations put it in the nlt for me please notice that godliness righteousness makes a nation great but sin is a disgrace notice to any people 
And what we want to do, get sin out. We want to get sin out. Because sin is a disgrace. That was just disgraceful. That is a disgraceful uh, people. We don't want to be disgraceful in God's eyes. But to allow sin to come in and make us a church that is disgraceful in God's eyes. Praising God, worshiping God, dancing for God, but sin all in the camp. And we see that. What is the example of that, people of God? You remember when Joshua and them, they went uh, basically uh, to go and fight Ai. They just defeated Jericho. They just defeated Jericho going around the walls. Now they're going over to Ai, which is a very smaller army that they're going to go up against. And we read in the scripture that they what? They got defeated. They were defeated. Why? Because there was some sin or disobedience that was in the camp. Now watch this from one man. One man caused them to lose the battle. One person. I know we say, well, God, why are you punishing us? It wasn't me. But I'm saying to you that one person, one thing can spoil it for all of us. Do you see why we as a body, many members in particular, have to live holy? Because if one it is affected, it affects all of us. Think about it regarding the body. Think about your own body. I don't know about you. But has anybody ever maybe hit their toe? Anybody ever hit their toe? Uh, what usually happens when you, when you do that? It, <laughs> everything hurts. I mean, usually you'll go touching everything but the toe. But you hitting your toe or you banging that little small, uh, you know, vessel, uh, that small uh, part of your body, it makes your whole body crumble. And I'm saying to you, when one member of the body is involved in sin, then it will affect us all. And the crazy part is this. Sometimes that brother and sisters, you and I can be going through some things in our own personal, individual, watch this, anatomy, our body, and you and I have to go where? To the doctor to find out, doc, I ain't feeling well. My back is hurting and I don't know why it's hurting. When you get there, the doctor runs an x-ray and he says, well, you got a bulging disc. Uh, maybe this is basically leaning on a nerve. And that nerve is basically bringing um, pain. Whatever it is that you need the doctor to see what it is because it's making the whole body be affected. And so sometimes, brothers and sisters, in the house of God, uh, we need the great physician to come in and say, God, what's wrong with us? What's happening? Why are we not functioning the way that we should be functioning? Uh, it, we read in the scriptures that they added that he added daily to the church, such as to be saved. What's going on, God? Why is it that we are not seeing what the scripture is saying? God, what is it? Why are we not functioning or flowing in the way that we are to be functioning? Why are we not winning the battles? Although you said, I've given you the land, I've I've given you this, but why is it seeming so hard, notice, to, to take these things or to do what God is saying? Well, just like with, eight, with the scripture, he tells Joshua, get up, stop all that crying. There's sin, watch this, in the camp. Now, Joshua has to do what? He has to go through and find out who is it? Who is it? This is where I would say many will not like that because it appear like somebody's pointing you out. But we are needing to look at the whole picture, which is the body. If you are affecting the body, I don't know about you, but if you having a problem, I don't know if you ever had a toothache. That toothache can affect your whole body. I've had one before. To the point where, you know, my wife would want to set up an appointment. I'd say, listen, they can take this tooth. Forget trying to go, just take it out. Because it's, it's messing with my whole side. Do you hear what I'm saying? My face, I feel it all in my face. Making my heart beat. If you hear what I'm saying. And so, when we see that this is what sin is doing, 
then what is the preacher trying to do? Get the sin out. Because it's affecting us all. Does that make sense what I'm saying? I did all that to hope you understood what I said. Amen? With that being said, we see it with Achan. And what happened with Achan? When they find out that it was Achan, what happened to Achan? They stoned him. But not only Achan, the whole family. Could you imagine being stoned for something that your mama did? Or something that your dad did? Could you imagine being affected based on what your brother and your sister did? And I know you and I say, man, we love them, but I'm just saying, I, I, I don't want to be affected like that. And so this is why sometimes people will go through different surgery and say, listen, just cut it off. Because it's affecting the whole body. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And so we're learning in the word of God, again, righteousness or godliness and many people will say oh that's just a little sin no a little leavens the whole what the whole lump so just a little bit of it man i i didn't do what they did this is not about comparing one another but that which is wrong to do we got to get it out we got to stop because it's affecting all of us i want us to go again as we go to the other parts second chronicles chapter 18 Verse 28 to 34, read that one more time and then we'll move. This is the time, basically King Jehoshaphat, at this time, who is the king of Israel? Let's see if you remember. Ahab. All right, did you just say that because you saw it? Oh, you knew it. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So King Ahab is, watch this, the king over Israel. And King Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. You have the uh, northern and the southern. Southern is Judah, northern is Israel, all right? With that being said, this man, Jehoshaphat, who was con considered to be a good king, hooked up with, watch this, the worst of them all. He hooked up with King Ahab, which is known as the king who is the worst of them all. Imagine finding the worst friend in the city. The worst friend that you could find. You hooked up with them. And this is what King Jehoshaphat did. The book says, go ahead. So King Ahab what? So King Ahab of Israel, the king of Jehoshaphat of Judah, led their armies against Ramoth Gilead. Because remember, Ahab was asking Jehoshaphat, will you go with me to fight in Ramoth Gilead? Of course, all of the prophets, the 400 that was basically called by Ahab, said, yes, go up. But it was the man of God, which is Micaiah. Micaiah said, basically, at the end, he was being sarcastic in the beginning, but he began to let him know, you're going to die. But what did Jehoshaphat do? He still went with him. There is the warning, but he still went with him. And the book said, the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, as we go, go ahead. As we go into battle, I will disguise myself so no one will recognize me. Remember, they wear what? The royal clothing. They wear, the kings wear the royal clothing. So, it's easy to spot the king because they have the royal clothing in, on. So this man Ahab is saying, you know what? I'm taking mine off, but watch this. Jehoshaphat, keep yours on. Keep yours on, I'm going to take mine off. Meaning when we get to war, guess who they're going to be looking for? The king. And who's the one that got the royal clothes on? Jehoshaphat. What do I learn from that? You be careful for somebody can be trying to set you up. That's right. Amen. And so the book says, watch this, recognize me. But you wear your what? Your royal you, robes. You wear yours, though. Go ahead. So the king of so Israel. So the king of Israel disguised himself, so they went into battle. And watch, go ahead, verses 30, go ahead. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had issues had issued these orders to his chariot commanders. Yes. Attack only the king of Israel. Do what? Attack only the king of Israel. All right, go ahead. Don't bother with anyone else. So now who are they going to go after? The one with the royal robe on. And who's the one that got the royal robe on? It's Jehoshaphat. The book says, go ahead. So when the king, when the Aramean chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat in his royal robes, they went after him. There is the king of Israel. They shouted, but Jehoshaphat called out, and the Lord saved him. The Lord did what? The Lord saved him. Go ahead. God helped him by turning the attackers away from but him. But he shouldn't have been out there with this man. So I'm saying to you, God will, watch this, step in and help. But there are certain places you and I should not be. 
There are certain places and certain people we should not be around. Yes, child of God, you are loved. Yes, God is there. But there are certain places God does not want you, are, you and I to be. He will step in. Yes, he hears your cry. You are his son. You are his daughter. But I'm saying to you, we shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there. And so he shouts out to God, God, help me. And as soon as the chariot's commanders realized he was not what? Not the king of Israel. What happened? They stopped chasing him. They stopped chasing him. Go ahead. An army soldier, however, randomly shot an arrow at the Israelite troops and hit the king of Israel between the joints of his armor. Uh huh. Turn the horses and turn the horses and get me out of here. Do what? Turn the horses and get me out of here. Uh huh. Ahab groaned to the driver of the chariot, and he was what? I'm badly wounded. So when you read the word of God, Ahab basically, hear me, he he was killed. God, it was it was said that God was going to kill him. He did all of that, watch this, thinking that he was going to get by by switching out his clothes, trying to basically disguise himself. But you and I, watch this, I learned from Adam and Eve, you can't cover up. You can't cover up anything. You can't change clothes. You can't do this. You and I can't hide from God. Does that make sense? And so, child of God, God knows where you and I are. And I'm saying to you, sometimes it'll be like this. The world may look like they're getting away. Yes. They're not getting away. But I just want you to know, you and I can't get away. That's true. God would pull the covers off of us. Soon as you and I think that we getting away, we'd be like, man, why I get caught? Does that make sense? And so you and I can't get away with nothing. Somebody can get away with, with, with adultery, fornication, stealing. But as soon as you and I do something like that, we call quick. And that lets you know you got a good father. Amen. Because your dad is not going to let you do this stuff and cause your soul to go to hell. Amen. Now, if you keep fighting him on it and keep disobeying him, then your reward will be the lake of fire. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Amen. So we see that this man basically, Jehoshaphat, now the fact that he did that, I want you to see, notice, let's learn some things. Uh, write these down. I think some of us know, read some of these before. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Write these down. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. What does it say? Don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. Put it in the KJV for me, please. What does it say one more time? Be what? Be not deceived. Uh-huh. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Evil behavior can corrupt you, child of God. Being around people that do not live holy, being around people that don't live a saved life, hmm. if you're not influencing them, guess what? They're influencing you. Amen. And you need to be honest with yourself. Be, be real honest with yourself. If, if you're not influencing them, I guarantee you they are influencing you. And this is why I say be careful, saying of God, brother and sister, who's ministering to you. Amen. Or here is the word, speaking into your life. You and I can't just be letting anybody speak into our life. Amen. Does that make sense? Because watch this, whatever they're dealing with, whatever thing that they're dealing with or bound by, it can connect itself to you. Do you see what I'm saying? If I am just a disobedient, stumbled individual and you let me speak into your life, which means I'm now going to have influence on what's going in your ears, what's getting to you in your mind, what's getting into your heart, and you're probably going to be being stubborn, disobedient as well. Amen. So you be careful who's speaking to you. Uh, Pastor Collins said these words to us. You be careful who you let preach in your pulpit. Because what, if they come down and preach in the pulpit, when they leave, they leave a residue of themselves there. That's right. And then now you got to figure out, wait a minute, what happened to the church? Because whatever they were dealing with was left there. 
I know we may not believe that, but that is true. It's very true. Very true. So you be careful who's speaking into your life. You be careful who wants to mentor you. You hear what I'm saying? Be careful of the uh, Facebook preacher. Be careful of the YouTube evangelist. That you like the way they preach. <laughs> you like, you know, you like certain things of how, how they like put their words together. Cliches. And now you're listening to them and if you're not careful, you, you'll sound like them. Does that make sense what I'm saying, y'all? Amen, sir. All right. With that being said, I want you to see another one. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Ephesians chapter 5, a couple of scriptures that we can look at. Go to the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Some good things in here. Basic, basically, this is speaking to us about walking, how we should walk. But notice what it says. A lot of things in here. Watch what it says. This is Paul writing to the church of Ephesus. We're going to get back to King Jehoshaphat. But this is basically teaching us we need to be careful who we're hooking up with. I learned from Jehoshaphat and, and him hooking up with Ahab that I got to be careful who I hook up with. Doesn't mean that I can't witness to people. We're not like in somewhere where we're trying to get away from the world. No, we're witnessing to the world, but make sure that the world is not influencing you. Yes. Does that make sense? So watch what we read in Paul says to the church of Ephesus in chapters 5, starting verse 1. What does it say? Uh, go ahead, sir. Therefore become imitators of God. Uh -huh. Copy him and follow his example. This is in the Amplified. You can get more out of it. You can learn more. Follow me uh, in your KJV. Go ahead. The Bible says, go ahead. As well beloved children, imitate their father. Imitate what? Their father. All right. So who are we imitating? We're imitating the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Do you see that? Notice, and walk what? Continually in love. That's how Jesus was. That means what? That is value one another. Uh-huh. Practice em empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others. That's what we should do. Notice, go Just ahead. Just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Somebody would say to me that Christ loved you, and when he loved you, did he show mercy on you? Yes, he did. Did he show mercy toward you? Was he long-suffering with you? Did he put up with your foolishness, my foolishness? Yes, sir. Huh? Yeah. Did we say we were going to do something and we didn't do it? And did, was he long-suffering about that? Amen. He was. Right? Did he knock us over the head? No. 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 He might have chastised us, but watch this. He still treated us with love. That's right. Do you see that? And this is how we are to walk. But watch this. The book says, practice empathy, compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as what? As Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, uh -huh. an offering and sacrifice to God. Go ahead, slain. slain for us. Slain for, for you, you. So that what? So that it became a sweet fragrance. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 3. But what? But sexual immorality and all more impurity, indecent of offensive behavior or greed must not even be hinted at among you. It shall not be what? Hinted at among you. I want you to see it in the KJV. Put that in the KJV. The book says, watch this, but what? But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. It should not be, not one person in the kingdom of God or the house of God. Should nobody sit there and say, now that's a fornicator. Mm. Let it not be named once among you. Now, somebody say, come on, Pastor. You know, people ain't perfect. I'm talking about what the scripture says. That's the Bible. So if the word of God is saying, let it not be named once. Come on, Pastor. I did that one time. He said not once should it be named among you. So when you say, uh, Pastor, why are you cracking down on this? Because it should not be named once among us. No one should be able to point a finger in here and say, now that's a fornicator right there. 
that one right there be all up in some sexual stuff. Go back to verse 3. The fornication, all an uncleanness. Uncleanness. You see that? Or covetousness. Let it not be named. Put it in the Amplified again, please. But sexual morality and, and all moral impurity, indecent, offensive behavior. They shouldn't know you at Winn-Dixie. There she go again. They shouldn't know you at Walmart. There, they, there he go again. Notice, or greed must not even be hinted, Amplified says, at among you, as it is proper among saints. For as, go ahead, sir. For as believers, our way, our way of life, whether in public or in private. Whether in what? Public or, or what? In private. Reflects what? Reflect the vil validity. Validity of our faith. Do you see that? Verse 4, what does it say? Let there be no filthiness and silly talk. Let there be no filthiness and what? Silly talk. Or what? Or coarse, obscene, or vulgar joking. So there should be no joking about this and that, and it's unclean. Uh, uh, listen to this nasty joke. Listen to what Cat Williams said. Mm. Kevin Hart said this. I was cracking up, boy. That's right. Did you see the Kings of Comedy, Bernie Mac, boy? He was so funny. Yeah, he vulgar. Boy, Steve Harvey be having me toe up, boy. No, sir. So these things, he says, no. It's... It should not be a part of us. Amen. Because if it's a part of us, what is it going to do? It's going to come out of us. Amen. One day you're going to curse. You're going to cuss. You're going to use profanity. Some of us will try to catch it, but it's too late. Some of us like, forgive me, Lord. But he's telling us it should not be a part of us, saint of God. So I'm learning from Ahab and Jehoshaphat. Ahab with Jezebel, he was the worst of them all. And so what the book is trying to teach the New Testament saint, the church of God, there are some things that you and I got to make sure we disconnect ourselves from. So he says, let there be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse, obscene or vulgar joking because such things are what? Are not appropriate. For what? For believers. Do you see that? But what? But instead speak of your thankfulness to God. Do you see that? Verse 5, somebody already said, y'all too spiritual for me. Go ahead. The book says, for be what? For be sure of this. What? No immoral, impure, or greedy person, for that one is in effect an idolater. Is what? An idolater. An idolater? Go ahead. Has any inheritance and in, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ in God? For what? For such a person places a high value on something other than God. Do you see that? The book says, go ahead, let's go. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. Don't let no one deceive you. Go ahead. That encourage you to sin. Oh. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Those who in habitually sin. This is why, like with Jeho Jehoshaphat and with Ahab, you got to be careful who's trying to hook up with you. What if they all entangled with some wickedness and you hook up with them? This is why you got to have discernment. You have to be able to sit there and say, mm, what, what is this about? Now, if I'm going to be teaching Bible studies and, 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 and I get to create the atmosphere and the environment, no problem. But if I got to come on your territory, we got a problem. Yes. Does that make sense, y'all? So do not participate, notice, or do not what? Or associate with them uh -huh. in the rebelliousness of sin. Uh, we having a cookout. Come on, fam. Come on to the house. Get you a plate. We having a barbecue. Come on, fam. Come on. Come on. But the book is letting me know I, I can't participate. Come on, it's uncle's birthday. You know he want to see you. You can miss one service. Am I speaking? Question, comment. 
You can, you can go get a plate. The problem is this. Many go get a plate and don't know how to get a plate and leave. Some of us will get a plate, sit down, talk, look at the time and find out, oh my goodness, I've been here for. You hear what I'm saying? So now again, your Christian liberty, you can do it. Can nobody have control over you like that? Your liberty, you can do it. But I just realize that some of us are not as strong as we think that we are. So as a Very preacher, true. I'm just trying to make sure that you don't find yourself in a vulnerable situation. Very true. That's all. You have Christian liberty to do what you want to do. Now, we know there are certain things we know that we should. But certain, you got to be able to have that cue like, all right, time for me to go. Not everybody has that. Some people stay too long. Yeah. <laughs> some people know like, mm-mm. <laughs> Once the music come on, I'm gone. Matter of fact, we got some cousins. Once, once, uh, once Harry come, we got to go. Right? But some of us don't have that cue. We, we stick around too long. And we say to ourselves, man, I should have left already. Yeah. That's true. And so the book says, for once you were where? For you were darkness, uh -huh. but now you are light in the Lord. Yes, we are. Walk as children of the light. Uh -huh. Live as those who are, are, are native born to the light. Uh -huh. For the fruit, the effect, the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord and letting your lifestyle be examples of what is must, most acceptable to him. Go ahead, sir. Your behavior expressing gratitude to God for your salvation. Verse 11, getting ready to close it down. Go ahead. Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, uh -huh. but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. Do you see? Expose the darkness. When you and I come around, brothers and sisters, darkness should be exposed. It's not that you are trying to expose or be like you some perfect person, but the way that you walk up and the way that you're holy, it exposes the darkness or the evil or those who don't live according to the word of God. It just exposes them. Yeah. It's like walking in a room and they're cussing, and as soon as they know that you live a certain life, it's like, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Mm -hmm. Why are they doing that? What is, what is in you that they respect to sit there and say, hey, stop, stop cursing? And you're not saying to them, hey, y'all stop cursing when I'm around. It's just they respect you. You see what I'm saying? They see the godliness and the holiness in you. The book says, do not what? Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, uh -huh. moral courage, and godly character. That's why those people, the, the, those in the world, are looking to see yeah. when you are going to sin. So you got to have integrity to do those things that, watch this, most people wouldn't do. Like if I'm in a world and I see you, uh, uh, a person drop a, uh, some money out of their pocket, and you're in front of it, and I look at you, I'm going to look at you just like this. Watch, she, she, watch I'm going to see if she's going to take it. And if you pick it up off the floor and put it in your pocket, that unsafe sitting there like, I told you these <laughs> Yeah. These church people are some thieves. They're waiting for you. Like, they, you know, anybody know that people be watching you? Anybody know at your job or at your school or in, in wherever you work that they like watching you? Because, I mean, you didn't went up in there and invited them to church. You didn't gave them a card. You didn't told them they need to come. You, you didn't told them My, our church ain't like that. And they ain't came, but watch this. They watching you. So now you're going to either, <laughs> you're going to be the door that they go through or the door that they talk about. That's good, sir. Do you hear what I'm saying? They're watching us. They want to know, is this real? They want to know, this all is God stuff. Is it real? Because as far as they're concerned, they don't think it's real. They think it's all a, a hoax. They think it's fake. They think it's phony. They think it's, they, they, they don't, they like, I'm done with this. 
They're going to science now. Because at least science got facts. But, but this church stuff, y'all be up and down. I heard her cursing, fighting. Now she talking to Joe Blow. And now he over there with, you know, Pam. We cannot be like that. Amen. Does that make sense, y'all? And I'm saying to you, even the people that come into the house of God, some of them may not even watch this, go get baptized yet. But they just coming and they're watching. And they will see you out in public and not even speak, but they watch it. And what has been coming over the pulpit, we don't do this. And God, the Bible says this. And saints of God, this is how we are. Can we say amen? amen. They heard the preacher say this. But then they see you out in public and they like, ain't that one of the people at that church? And that man think everybody living right. Now, you talk back to me. How does that make us look? How does it make us look? Okay. It just like a hypocrite. But God still has a church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God still has a church. The book says, for it is what? This for, what? For it is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. Do you see that? Go ahead. But what? But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. Precepts. Go ahead. For it is light that makes everything visible. It is light that makes everything visible. For this reason? For this reason, he says, awake sleeper. Uh -huh. Arise from the dead. Arise from and the Christ dead. And Christ will shine as done upon you and give you light. And give you light. Verse 15. Go ahead. Therefore, see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, uh -huh. not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, and intelligent, discerning people. Go ahead. Verse 16. Make, making, the very most, the ver making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing, taking advantage of each opportunity, and using it with wisdom and diligence. KVJV says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless. Do not be unwise. Go ahead. But understand and firmly grasp what will the will of the Lord. Find out what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18. Do not get drunk with wine. Uh huh. For that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the what? With the Holy Spirit. All right. Go ahead. And constantly guide and be guided by him. Uh huh. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Offering praise by singing and making melodies with your heart to the Lord. What should we do? Verse 20, give what? Always give thanks to God, the Father, for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why I'm saying we need to be careful who we hook up with. 2 John chapter 1, verses 9. Let's pull that up. 2 John chapter 1, verse 9, and we'll get back to Jehoshaphat very quickly. 2 John chapter 1, verse 9. Notice what it says. Go ahead. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ... Have not God. Be careful for those who do not abide in the doctrine of Christ. Be careful hooking up with people that do not abide in the doctrine of Christ. Yes. Go ahead. He that what? He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He hath what? He hath both the Father and the Son. So if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you have the Father and the Son. Notice the book. But if there come. If there come any upon you. And bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house. So if they don't come with this doctrine, what doctrine was given to us, people of God? The, the apostles. apostles' doctrine. If they don't come with this doctrine, receive them not in your home. If a Jehovah Witness comes and says, listen, uh, can we talk to you? I want to talk to them. But I don't think they're going to talk to me too long. If a Mormon wants to talk to you, that's all right. But after you talk to them and they don't want to receive the truth, I'm not saying to them, well, God bless you. I'm not saying that. Because I don't want God to bless that ministry at all. That's right. Because it's not God's. Now, somebody say, that's not right, Pastor. You've been, that's evil. No, look at the book so you don't say I said it. 
if there come, go ahead. If there come any unto, unto you, uh -huh. and bring not this doctrine. Bring not this doctrine, which the apostles' doctrine, the death, the burial, and resurrection. Acts 2.38, one God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Notice, receive him what? Not into your house. Neither what? Neither bid him God speak. Put it in the NLT. Make it simple, please. If anyone comes, they'll go ahead. If anyone comes to your meetings and uh -huh. does not teach the truth about Christ, uh -huh. don't invite that person into your home. Or give what? Or give any kind of encouragement. Go ahead to the next verse. Verse 11. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. Do you see that? Now, we love everybody. But what you teaching, stop. Stop teaching that. You get what I'm saying? People say, we're all Christians. We're all pre talking about Jesus. No, sir. No, we're not. You see that? All right? Let's go back to Jehoshaphat. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1. We read this, 2 Chronicles. Let's go back there to the Old Testament. And we're going to finish up Jehoshaphat. 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 1. Because Jehoshaphat hooked up with Ahab, he made it back home safely. But Ahab died. And Jehoshaphat, when he comes home, notice what's said to him. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Jeho Judah, what happened? Returned to his house in a peace to Jerusalem. Uh-huh. And Joel, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldn't thou help the ungodly yes. and love them that hate the Lord? Do you see that? Go ahead. Therefore is the wrath upon thee from before, from before the Lord. Basically, why are you hooking up with somebody that hates God? Ahab never obeyed what God said to do. Mm. And his wife was just as wicked as she wanted to be, Jezebel. So he's saying, why did you hook up with them? Why? Why? But, but, but God, now watch this. But God, but isn't Ahab like my brother? It's still Israel. But if they don't like God, they hate God. They hate the authority. They hate the things of God. Why are you hooking up with them? And that's what is being said to Jehoshaphat. But nevertheless, go ahead. There are good things found in thee, uh -huh. and that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, uh -huh. and have prepared thy heart to seek God. Do you see that? I want you to go now to Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. Let's move forward. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. I want you to see Jehoshaphat, how he did reverence, and how he did seek God for help. What I'm saying is that there may be some things we read about Jehoshaphat, even King David. But overall, God is the one. He's the judge. He's seeing the heart. And when Jehoshaphat got in trouble, what I do learn from Jehoshaphat is that he called on the Lord. And I'm saying that that's what you and I need to pick up. That when you are in trouble, remember God. Yes. Remember King Asa. That when he got in trouble, what did he do? He turned to man. When his, he started having problems with his health, he turned to man-made physicians. And so I'm saying to you and I, whenever we are in trouble, you and I need to turn to who? God. And this is what I can learn from Jehoshaphat. Let's read, watch this, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. Make it simple, we'll get through it. The Bible says, after this, the armies of what? After this, the armies of the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Midianites declared war on Jehoshaphat. All right, go ahead. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. Uh -huh. They are already at Hazazon Tamar. Uh -huh. This is, was another name of En Gedi. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Jehoshaphat was terrified. He was what? He was terrified. Terrified by what? By this news. And what? And begged the Lord for guidance. He's what? He begged the Lord for guidance. This is what you and I need to learn from this. That whenever you are facing trouble, facing problems, you and I need to get guidance from who? The Lord. From the Lord. From God. Go to God for the guidance. Go get some counsel. Go get some instruction. He says, watch this, he also ordered everyone in Judah to do what? To begin fasting. Sometimes you and I got to fast, saints of God. Sometimes you got to turn over the plate when you're trying to seek God. Why? Because I need this flesh to calm down so I'll know what God is saying for me to do. Mm -hmm. 
And the book says, so people from what? All the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Jehoshaphat stood before the community of Judah in Jerusalem in front of the new con- ca- courtyard of the temple of the Lord. And what happened? He prayed, O Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are the ruler of all the kingdoms of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Uh-huh. O our, o our God, did you not drive out those who lived in this land when the people of Israel arrived? Uh-huh. And did, not, did you not give this land forever to the descendants of your friend Abraham? Uh-huh. Your people settled here and built this temple to honor your name. Yes, you did, Lord. Go ahead. They said, whenever we are faced with any calamity such as war, plague, or famine, we can come and stand in your presence before this temple where your name is honored. We can cry out to you to save us, and you will hear us and rescue us. Where do we hear this the first time? He says, it was told to us that if we turn to this temple and we cry out, you will hear us. Who's, where do where we hear this first? Second Chronicles 7.14. Who was the one that, that was in prayer? I just heard, somebody said it. Solomon. Solomon, Solomon. I want you to see. Sis brought it up. She did. Let's go there. I want you to mark that so you can see. Um, matter of fact, a little bit before chapter 7, go to uh, chapter 6. Start at verses, chapter 6, verses 20. Solomon's temple prayer. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 20. This is Solomon praying, chapter 7, he gets the answer. But it is said that, go ahead, sir. That thy eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Uh Uh-huh. Upon the place whereof thou hast said that thou wouldest put thy name there. Uh Uh-huh. To hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Toward this place. Go ahead. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of thy servant and of thy people of Israel, which they shall make towards the gift. I want you to understand how important, watch this, the temple or the house of God was. I want you to understand. Now, I understand we can pray anywhere. Yeah. And you build, you, you are a temple of the Holy Ghost. But I want you to know that when they built the house of God or the temple of God, it was dedicated unto God. And it was to the point, God, when we turn back towards this place, I'm asking you to hear our cry. When we turn back to this place, and notice when it says we, when we do this, which means it's not so much ours as an individual, but when the church of the living God come back to this place, and we cry out unto God, God, we've dedicated this place, and God, this is your house. This is why the house of God is so important to me. This is why the house of God should be important to all of us. Because when we as an assembly come together and we cry out in this house, we're asking God to hear us. Yes, sir. We're asking God to hear us. And this is why when we come to this place, what's the first thing we want to do? Repent. We want to come back to this place, cry out to God and say, God, we have sinned. We have done wrong. It's not, I ain't do nothing. They the one did that, God. No, we have sinned. We have brought this wickedness upon us. And God, we turn back to you. And we ask that you would please forgive us of our sins. We ask that you would, Lord, look upon us in this house, in this place. And so this is what Solomon, he dedicated this temple Unto God and in a a prayer, Lord, when we turn back to this house, no matter where they are, basically he said, even if they were in other places, I mean, they're because they were in capture, they were in captivity. But God, when they turn back towards this place or wherever this place is, what does that look like today? God, if I'm out there and I'm lost, but I turn back to this place or I turn back to where the word of God was taught. If I turn back to where the teaching was taught, when I turn back to God, when I do that, I'm asking you, God, to forgive me. Amen. So watch this. When I want to get back right with God, guess where the backslider has to come back to? 
You got to come back to the house of God. You got to come back. So you can't say, I'm repented, and you ain't came back here. Yes, sir. Do you hear what I'm saying? When somebody tell you, well, no, I'm, I'm right with God now, but we ain't seen you at church. Oh, no, I don't eat church. The devil is a liar. You have to come back here to the place where you got saved, where truth was being taught. Does that make sense, y'all? For the Lord to hear. Does that make sense? And so this is why we come and we cry out on Saturday morning. I'm plugging that in. We cry out on Saturday morning as a church, as an assembly, for what reason? Because I do believe at some point in our life, somebody turned off the wrong side. So what are we going to do? We're going to cry out and ask God to forgive us. And when we do that, when we turn back to this place, we're asking God to hear our prayer. Amen? Let's go back to it as we get ready to close it out. Go back to Second Chronicles chapter 20 where we left off, please. All right, the book says now, go ahead, and now. And now see what the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir are doing. Yes. You will not let our ancestors invade those nations when Israel left Egypt. God, remember, go ahead. So they went around them and did not destroy them. So now they're about to fight us, God. Go ahead. Now see how they rewarded Look us. Look how they reward us, because we didn't fight them, God. We went around. Remember when our ancestors went around? We didn't even mess with them. Go ahead. For they have come to throw us out of the land. They come to throw us out of the land, which you gave. Go ahead. Which you gave us as an inheritance. Uh-huh. Verse 12, the book says, Oh, our God. Oh, our God. Won't you stop them? Will you stop them, Lord? Go we ahead. We are powerless against Notice. this mighty army. We are what? Powerless. Now, what is he showing us in the prayer? What is he showing us, people of God? He's humbling himself. And he's recognizing, God, we're not strong enough. We, if you don't help us, we're not going to win this. And brothers and sisters, I think that every last one of us got to get to a place where we humble ourselves and we realize we can't do this without God. Amen. Our enemy will devour us. And so it's a dangerous thing when you see a saint trying to do it by themselves. I'm saying humble yourself because you and I cannot fight this thing without God Amen. and so this king got everybody around him fasting and praying seeking God saying y'all we need God because if not we're about to be destroyed he's not sitting there saying oh the devil is not. we the children of God we the children of God no he's going to God and say God help us look at us we are weak we are this we are that i know you want to sit there and say pastor why don't you build us up i get it i know what you're saying but i'm saying right now i realize that we are not where we should be and we need god to help us amen and so the book says oh our god won't won't you stop them we are powerless against this mighty army that is about to attack us go ahead we do not know what to do. We don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, God. Go ahead. But we are looking to you for I'm help. I'm looking for your help in Belglay, Jesus. The book says, as all. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones. With their what? Little ones. Notice who's, who's all there, people of God. Take note of this. Write this down. They all stood before the Lord. Hmm. Was it just, watch this. The men. Was it just the wives? Or do you see the children there too? So when we sit there and say, where your son at? I let him stay at home. Yes, sir. Where your husband at? <laughs> Tired, he didn't want to come. I'm saying, we all got to be here. The brothers, the sisters, the children, the sons, the daughters, everybody got to be here. Because guess what? We all need God. Amen. That's good, sir. Look at the scripture, y'all. I'm not making this up. As all the men of Judah stood before the Lord, with the little ones, wives, and children. Go ahead. The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. As they there. were together, what happened? The Spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. The Spirit there. of the Lord came upon the man. This is the Old Testament. In the New Testament, we call it, watch this, interpretation of tongues. Mm -hmm. 
In the New Testament, we call it the interpretation of tongues. Somebody starts speaking in tongues, watch this, and the word of the Lord comes across, and then all of a sudden you see a brother just come out and interpret the tongues of what God once said in the midst of us. Yes. To give us what? Direction. Mm -hmm. And so the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men standing there. His name, go ahead. Jehazel. Go ahead. Jeha Jeha Jehazelel, son of Zechariah, uh -huh. son of Benaniah, son, son of Jael, son of Mathaniah, a Levite who was a descendant of Asaph. Of Asaph. Go ahead. Verses 15. He said, listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem. Give us the word. Listen, King Jehoshaphat. Uh. This is what the Lord said. What did you say, Jesus? Do not be afraid. I don't, I, listen, once you heard that. I'm good. I mean, we were, about, we were afraid because we were about to be overwhelmed, overtaken. And then when you hear the voice of the Lord said, y'all don't worry. That's where we start, watch this, to start shouting. Amen. When you hear the voice of the Lord said, listen, don't worry. Don't be afraid. The book says, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Go ahead. Do not be discouraged by the mighty army. For what? For the battle is not yours. It's what? But God's. It's what? The battle is not yours. It's what? But God's. Go ahead. Verse 16. Tomorrow march out against them. You're still not going to go out against them. But watch what God says. Go ahead. You will find them coming up through the accent of Ziz uh -huh. at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Verse 17. Got to go home. But you will not even need to fight. We ain't going to what? You won't even need to fight. You, you're not going to even fight this battle. Saints of God, a lot of times we're fighting battles <laughs> that God ain't told us to fight. Yeah. He told you to fight. We're fighting things. He never told you to fight. Well, no, Pastor, I had to go to do this. He, did he tell you to do that? No, but I got to go do that. See, you, you try to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And so he says, but you will not even need to fight. Take what? Take your position. Well, if you're telling me I ain't got to fight, why I got to take position then? The book says, go ahead. Then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. Go ahead. He is with you. He's oh, what? He's with you. Oh, go ahead. Oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do what? Do not be afraid or discouraged. Go ahead. Go out against them tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. All right. We're going to go out, and when we get out there, what we're going to do? Go ahead. Verses 18. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed low with his face to the ground. Uh -huh. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same, worshiping the Lord. Because once you get the answer from the Lord, what should you do? Worship the it's Lord. It's time to worship. It's time to worship. Once you get the answer from God, it is now time to worship and say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Yes, Lord. I just want to thank you. Now, most people will wait. Well, I'll wait till after the battle is over before I shout. You know the song. The Bible says, the, the song says, don't wait till the battle's over. Sh shout now. Because you know in the end, you shall win. The book says, then King Jehoshaphat bowed, and he began to worship. Then go ahead. Then the Levites. Then the Levites from the clans of Kohath and Korah stood to praise the Lord. All right. The God of Israel with a very loud shout. Go ahead. Verses 20. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekor. Uh -huh. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and said, Listen to me, all, all right. you people of Judah in Jerusalem. Go ahead. Believe in the Lord your God. Go ahead. And you will be able to stand firm. So you don't get like this until you start fasting and praying. Hmm. You don't get a boldness like this until you start fasting. Where is the boldness coming from? The boldness is coming from because God gave the word. And the book says, go ahead. Believe in his prophets and you will succeed. Believe in what? Believe in his prophets. Believe in the man of God is what he said. Believe in the man of God that was given. Go back to it, sis. Go back to verses 20. Believe in the prophets and you will succeed. I put them there for a reason. Notice the book says in verse 21. Go ahead. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers. Here we go. To walk ahead of the army. Uh -huh. Singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. Go ahead. This is what they sing. What they sing. Give thanks to the Lord. Uh -huh. His faithful love endures forever. Now, I don't know how the song went, but I do know that we can do that. Amen. I don't know the temple of the song, but I do know that he, they begin to sing. I do know that when they went out, they start singing first. Which is why, watch this, praise and worship goes before the word. Amen. Praise and worship goes before the battle. 
This is why we sit there and say praise and worship got to be on point. This is why we say the singers got to come here and pray to get their mind right because you got to go out first and do what? And sing unto the Lord. Amen, sir. Praise and worship can be dead and stale in here. Does that make sense what I'm saying? This is why you got to stand up and praise God because there's going to be some fight that's going on. And by the time that the altar comes, watch this, we need God to have broken down some strongholds. We need a God to break some chains. Yes, sir. And so what goes out first, what starts at first, it is the praise and the worship. And this is why chaos will try to show up right before praise and worship. Because the enemy knows that when we start praising and worshiping, it does something to the atmosphere. He inhabits the praises of his people. So when we start praising, we start moving things in the spirit. And you start seeing God begin to operate in this place. And this is why the enemy would love for you and I to keep our mouth shut. This is why he will tell you, you ain't got nothing to praise God about. Go ahead, you ain't got nothing to praise God. You didn't did this. But I'm saying to you, if you're going to start overcoming some things, you and I need to learn how to praise and worship. That's right. We got too many men that will sit there and say, I'm a word man. <laughs> I ain't all that singing things. You better get with the program Amen. and start praising God and then get the word. Do you Amen. hear what I'm saying? Because if all you're doing is getting the word, you can sit there and have a whole lot of knowledge, but don't know how to use the knowledge that you have. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so this man, Jehoshaphat, a man, a king that is in position. What did he do? He began to say, all right, let's walk out. But who do we appoint first? Get the singers out there. Matter of fact, you have a version that sit there and say, he brought forth men to sing. Did you hear what I said? Men. And why is it about men? What is it rather about men? If you can get men to start worshiping, it's nothing wrong with our sisters. We love y'all. Worship. But if you can get the man to start clapping their hands, I don't care if it's off beat or on beat. But if you can get the man to start worshiping and waving their hand and singing unto God. If you can get the man to start crying out to God and start shouting unto God. You got, watch this, uh, that devil got something on his hands now. Because the ones that God put in position as to lead, yes, they out there on the front line first worshiping God. Yes, sir. And so why does the enemy, I'm not preaching y'all. Preach, sir. But why does the enemy fight our men? Why are we? No, I'm not getting y'all on the back. But why are the men sitting far in the back? Don't want to get involved. Why do we oppose leadership or authority? Why is it that pride gets into the man? Why is it, people of God? Because the devil knows if, I, if they get together, if, if they get together and start praising and worshiping, ain't no way we stopping this thing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But that's where we get into this tit for tat with one another. And this is why I say to the brothers, when somebody's getting baptized or filled with the Holy Ghost, stay right here until they come out. Hug up on them. Hug up on them. He said, they're taking too long. Hug up on them and stick around. Because we want them to stay here. Amen. Because if we be connected this way, it cannot stop what God wants to do. Does that, that, that makes sense what I'm saying. We, today we see a lot of women in the church today. And that's, I'm glad to see the ladies. But where are the men? Where are the men? Where are the fathers? Where are the brothers to teach the young man? Where are they? Why can't we get it together? Why are we all over the place? Because the devil knows if they get together and they come, become consistent, I got a problem. The men are moderating. The men are praising. The men are doing uh, choir singing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's right, sir. So I'm saying to you, the book says, go ahead, sir. This is what? After consulting people, the king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army, singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. Go ahead. This is what the, they sing. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Verses, go ahead, 22. Amen. At that very moment, they began to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. They start turning around fighting themselves. Could you imagine you breaking out singing and worshiping? And the enemy that came to fight you start fighting themselves. And all you started doing was praising and worshiping. Mm. 
Did y'all see that? Yes, sir. I know we might look at this and say that's a story from the Old Testament, but it's not for today. The devil is a liar. Whatsoever thing is written, is written for our what? Uh -huh. Our learning. What happened for them, which is in the natural, is what happens for us in the spiritual. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Any questions, y'all? We'll leave it there. Any questions? Any questions? If you would take some time, we don't have time to read it, but you can go and you can read basically Second Chronicles 30. Matter of fact, just in that time, we'll pull up Second Chronicles 20, and then we'll be done with Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 31. Put it in your amplifier. Blow it up as we, we go home. Look at what Jehoshaphat did. We learned from King Ahab, but watch this human side of us. Watch this human side of us. Watch this. Go ahead, sir. Now Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 25 years. His mother named Azabah, the daughter of Shihai. Uh huh. He walked. He walked in the way of his father Asa and did not depart from it. Yeah. Go doing ahead. Doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. He did. Go ahead. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Only. Go ahead. Only the high places for pagan sacrifices were not removed. Uh huh. For the people had not yet set their hearts firmly on the God of their fathers. Go ahead. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, from the first to the last, behold, they are written in the records of Jehu, the son of Hananiah, which are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. All right, it's in the book of the kings of Israel. Go ahead. After all, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance. What did he do? He made an alliance. With who? With a Ahaz. Now who was a Ahazi? The that's, king of Israel. That's Ahab's son. We read that king. He made, watch this, he hooked up with Ahab. Now he's hooking up with Ahab's son. He made an alliance with Ahaziah, king of Israel, and what? And he acted what? He acted wickedly in doing so. Go ahead. He joined him in building ships to go to Tarshish for trade, and they built them in Izan Gibber. Izan Gibber. Uh huh. Then I Izzer, the Izzer, son of... go ahead. Got to help me here on... Do Dodava, go Dodava ahead. Dodava of Monarisha. Yes. Prophesied. Prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because you have al aligned yourself with ah Ahazi, the Lord has broken down what you have built. Do you see that? So he hooked up with Ahab, son. So we already know the Lord approached him about Ahab. Why are you hooking up with Ahab? Now here it goes again. Why are you hooking up with Ahazi, Ahab's son? What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, a lot of times we don't learn from the first lesson. Do you see that? A lot of times we don't learn. And remember the first time he was crying out to God saying, help me, Lord, help me. I'm about to die. Now, why are you hooking up with his son? So I'm thinking that what we need to do is learn lessons the first time. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's clap our hands in Jesus' name. Thank you for being here. Saints of God, we want to see all of you here doing service Sunday mornings, Sunday nights, and Wednesdays. I don't believe that that's too hard. An hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes of your time that you can continue to grow and that you will learn the word of God. What is this for? This is for your salvation, for you to be saved. We want you to come and be here. We don't hold you long. If you're staying here any longer than that, it's because you're fellowshipping. But we do want the saints of God to be in the house of God. Amen? God bless you. Let's pray for this food in Jesus' name and go partake. Father, we love you. We thank you for the word of the Lord that we've learned, that we've heard. Thank you for the message that you've given us through the word of God. For whatsoever things are written aforetime is written for our learning. What did we learn? Father, I believe that you've given us your word. I pray that you give us, Lord God, the grace to apply it. For those that are watching live, God, that they will take the word and they would go back, Lord God, and apply it in their life. For we can see through Asa, we can see through Jehoshaphat, and we are able to see, Lord God, through Ahab. And we'll learn more, O oh God, as we go forward. But we ask that you, Lord, put your hands on the saints of God, that we take our salvation and the word of God so serious, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for your patience, your long-suffering. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Bless this food, sanctify it, make it pure. In Jesus' mighty name we all say, amen, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.